Listen to a lecture in a geography class. Today we're going to be talking about the geological formation called a crater. Do you know what a crater is? It's a bowl or elliptical shaped depression in the surface of the Earth or in the surface of any other celestial body for that matter. We're going to be looking at two tremendously different types of craters. One type of craters formed by internal forces during volcanic activity that causes a mountain to either collapse or explode. The other type of crater is formed by an external force from the impact of a meteor with the surface of the Earth. Do you know which kind of crater is more common on Earth? Volcanic craters or impact craters? I'm not going to tell you now, but keep the question in your mind as we're going over the information in the lecture and we'll come back to it later. The first type of crater we're going to look at has been formed as a result of volcanic activity. Volcanic craters are actually formed in two different ways, either from collapse or from explosion. Let's look first at a collapse crater. Do any of you recognize it? The crater in this photo is Crater Lake in the Cascade Mountains in southern Oregon. Geologists believe that Crater Lake was once part of a towering volcanic mountain. They've named this mountain of yesteryear Mount Mazama. Sometime around 7,000 years ago, a tremendous mass of lava flowed out of the mountain and the unsupported peak of the huge mountain collapsed, leaving a crater six miles wide. What we have left today from this huge mountain from thousands of years ago is this six-mile-wide crater. Now we'll look at the other type of volcanic crater, an explosive crater. Let me be clear about this, that there are two different kinds of volcanic craters, but they're both formed from volcanoes. This is the second type of volcanic crater, in addition to the collapsed volcanic crater we already discussed. This type of crater is formed not because of an inward collapse, as Crater Lake was formed, but because of a sudden and forceful explosion. Can you recognize the mountain in this photograph? Of course you can. This is, I'm sure you know, Mount St. Helens, or actually the crater that remains atop Mount St. Helens. It was during a violent volcanic eruption on May 18, 1980, that tons of ash and debris were blown into the atmosphere, and a mile-wide crater was formed. Well, that's all we're going to discuss about volcanic craters, but the two different types of volcanic craters should be clear. One kind, like Crater Lake, is formed when a mountain collapses, and the other, like Mount St. Helens, is formed when a mountain explodes. Now we'll move on to the other radically different type of crater, the kind that's caused by the impact of an external force, such as a meteor, rather than as part of a volcanic mountain. The crater in this photograph was caused when a meteor collided with the Earth. This crater, which is located in north-central Arizona, has the rather appropriate name of Meteor Crater. This huge crater is more than three-quarters of a mile across. Because it wasn't formed during volcanic activity, the walls of the crater are composed of sedimentary rather than volcanic rock. The meteor that caused the crater was almost totally destroyed on impact, although a number of tiny fragments of the meteor have been found in the vicinity of the crater. Let's return now to the question I posed at the beginning of the lecture. Which type of crater, from volcanoes or from impact, is the most common on Earth? If you thought the answer was volcanic craters, you're right. At least 80 impact craters are known to exist on Earth. However, this number is nothing like the number of volcanic craters that exist on our geologically active planet. Well, that's all for today. See you next week.